Welcome back to Book 6 of St. Augustine's Confessions. And this is an interesting one, as all the books are in this great book's quest. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is these are these difficult passages. St. Augustine talks about, in the Bible, there are all these different passages that, if taken literally, are kind of ridiculous. And they're made to be that way so that they could only be decrypted by those who are spiritually earnest and who have perhaps a mentor to help them decode the passages, the gold, the hidden gems that are located within all these Bible passages. And Ambrose is that mentor for St. Augustine. So, the importance of having a mentor to decode secret knowledge is in this book six. Another interesting happening, I really found this interesting, is that St. Augustine sees a beggar. First of all, let's give a little background. Between the ages of about 19 and 30, St. Augustine is possessed by a desire for worldly honor power, sex, money, all these different things that we associate with perhaps the dark side of human desire. And he's still planning his cunning stratagems and, and strategies and making all these moves in order to get these worldly goods. But the beggar, he just got drunk, got food, and was so happy. Now, St. Augustine recognizes that this is not true joy. This is just a temporary happiness from having a full stomach and being drunk. But the point he makes is what difference does it make if you're not going after the real joy, that is the joy that is found in the divine, in God? What difference does it make if you're a beggar or if you're planning all these cunning tricks in order to get worldly honor? Not much of a difference. So he says, I could have just gotten it by getting drunk. Well, I would argue that that's not the case. It is the cunning tricks that St. Augustine employed that actually allowed him to gain that power in order to have such a big voice that echoes across all of Western civilization today. So, yeah, St. Augustine would not have been better off as a drunk beggar. Now, I am going to talk about Olypius. Olypius is one of St. Augustine's best friends and he writes a lot about his life, the life of Olypius. Particularly there are some really interesting points. One of them was how he was so passionately against the gladiator games. He was known for this. So one day a group of hooligans comes up to him and physically restrains him and forces him to go to one of the gladiator matches that he so violently rebukes, rebukes all of the gladiators. Well, he says, Olympia says, okay, you can tie me up, you can force me to go, but I will close my eyes and by the virtue of this, I will overcome the games and I will overcome you fools who try to force me to watch. But something interesting happens at the gladiator games. During the most bloodthirsty moment when all the crowd is yelling and the spectacle is at its peak, he decides to open his eyes for a second. And that's a big mistake. Because the moment that he opens his eyes, he becomes one with the crowd and he takes in that bloodthirst and he becomes just the man that he was fighting against the becoming. However, that is not the end for our Olypius, because Augustine writes that this became a memory for him, a bad memory that would eventually lead him on the divine path to becoming a righteous man. And a righteous man, Olypius, did become. There's some other interesting stories about Olypius, such as when he was falsely convicted of a crime because he picked up the, mur the weapon, not the murder weapon, but someone was trying to to get into the silversmith shop 
and steal some of the things. And he was cutting through a fence with a knife, and Olypius picked up the knife, and people saw him examining it. Moral of the story, if you see a crime being committed, don't pick up the weapon that was used, because you will end up being convicted. Thankfully, they found out the truth. Olypius got off, but still, still, if you're watching this video, I, I don't think you need that advice. So, I'm going to conclude this by saying there's a passage that I want to paraphrase about St. Augustine. He says, always be cognizant, always be aware of the state that you're in at any moment, because you never know which moment can be your last. This echoes throughout everything. Marcus Aurelius talks about this as well, living every moment as if it could be your last. Always being aware of the state that you're in. It's very interesting how this echoes completely throughout all the books that you read. Pretty fantastic advice, I would say. So, word of the day. And our word of the day today is privily. What does privily mean? It means secret. And how do you know? Because priv, this prefix, what else is it a prefix of? Private, privately. That's also secretly. It's a very similar word, just a little fancier sounding. Privily. So, I will see you back here for book seven of St. Augustine's Confessions. Keep reading, keep learning.